Um, and Claire's title, as you can see from the screen, uh, Therapeutic Landscapes of Prehistory. Thank you. <clears throat> so, yeah, this follows on quite nicely from the last project because um, obviously it focuses on therapeutic value of prehistoric landscapes. And really, it's looking at how these places influence our individual lived experience and what role they have in the promotion of well being. So this comes on the back of over a decade of research into the therapeutic impact of heritage involvement, uh, which has shown that the historic environment can help to improve subjective, psychological, social and physical well-being. However, despite this advance in knowledge, we still don't possess a comprehensive understanding of how individuals directly relate to heritage assets in themselves and what influence this has on well-being. Likewise, we have yet to develop a more nuanced appreciation of how this phenomenon is influenced by the experience of everyday historic surroundings. This is especially pertinent to the prehistoric environment, the public value of which generally tends to be less well understood. So my research explores these issues further in the context of Stonehenge, Avery and the Vale of Pusey in Wiltshire. Um, and an area which, home to a diverse range of prehistoric monuments, offers rich ground from which to investigate how people experience, interpret and value <coughs> prehistoric heritage. Um, so I'll just review some of the fieldwork that I've undertaken over the past couple of years and uh, discuss some of the preliminary findings as well. Um, so focusing largely on the experiences of local residents, the better part of the fieldwork comprised a series of qualitative interviews with people living within a nine mile radius of the study area. Um, and these are just some of the activities that um, we got up to. Um, the interviews were semi-structured and conducted either while walking or seated. Participants were also invited to keep a reflective record prior to the interview, which represented their personal experience and perceptions of their local historic heritage. Um, and these are just some of the pictures that participants have taken in their own time. Um, in addition, uh, local and non-local groups were engaged in a number of reflective walks within the Avebury landscape in order to explore the therapeutic potential of reflective immersion in this prehistoric environment. The group work consisted of a half-day experiential walk through part of the landscape, followed by an audio-recorded feedback session where participants shared their thoughts on the event. They were also they were also invited to record their experiences during the walk. Um, and it's just again some photos taken. Um, all of these methods were underpinned by phenomenological theory and practice drawn from experiential psychotherapy, landscape phenomenology, reflective life world research and non representational approaches. And this approach was chosen um, specifically for its capacity to to determine how the historic environment features in and influences the different dimensions of an individual's life world. Um, it was also applied for its potential to help participants to reflect more deeply on the thoughts, feelings and sensations they experience in relation to their historic environment. In the case of the interview research, a total of 40 participants were recruited from across the study area. Um, the gender of the sample was fairly evenly balanced between male and female and the participants ranged between 20 and 87 years of age, um, the vast majority of whom were over 60 and of white British ethnicity. A range of qualifications and occupations were represented and most participants were either native to the area or long-term residents. Um, so the, the reflective walks were carried out with two groups of students from the University of Reading and a group recruited from a local walking initiative. Um, the student groups ranged from between 19 and 30 years of age and were predominantly female and in contrast the community participants ranged between 60 and 75 years of age. They were evenly split between male and female, um, had a diverse range of um, education and um, work experience and they were mostly retired. Um, a number of ethnicities were represented in the student groups, however all three groups identified mainly as white British. Although the data collected from the various strands of fieldwork is still in the process of being analysed, some significant cross-cutting things have been identified. 
Note the group of themes presented here today is a working model and will change in line with further analysis. Um, participants mainly spoke about their experiences concerning the sites and monuments closest to them. And this took in sites of various descriptions and prehistoric periods, both standing and excavated, but it also included artefacts found in the landscape. Um, participants reported a wide range of positive effects in response to the archaeology, which you can, oh, sorry, I'm way behind here, as you can see. <laughs> um, and, um, and from the analysis so far, it seems that participants experienced these qualities in relation to these six interconnected themes. Um, and not all of these have been sufficiently developed, so I'll just focus on collective connections, continuity and contemplative space for today. Um, the, the category of collective connections relates largely to the meaning participants draw from the cultural narratives of the landscape and the sense of connection they experience in relation to the past peoples who lived in and created these places. Participants express that they feel connected to the prehistoric inhabitants of the area through the remains of their material culture, but also through place as the next generation of people to reside in these landscapes. In a sense, many participants feel part of a larger community that spans thousands of years, and thus part of the history of the area itself. A number of participants also reported how this perce perception stimulates for them a sense of collector collective ownership of and duty of care to their historic environment. In some cases, this sense of ownership and belonging makes people feel that they are part of the landscape. One of the primary reasons for these feelings of connectedness is that the visibility of the archaeology in the landscape is a constant reminder of the fact that people have lived in these places for such a long time. Participants expressed how they feel connected by the, or sorry, contained by this, almost as if they are held or cushioned in some sense by the resonances of past people and their activities. Many participants highlighted how they find this comforting and welcoming. Others find this sensation or idea enriching in the way it brings the landscape alive for them. This shared sense of place and connection to past people and their narratives might be understood as what Lynn Froggett and colleagues have termed cultural inclusion, in that it has the power to make individuals feel part of a larger cultural group or whole. This appreciation for connectivity or a feeling of solidarity may also explain why some participants derive comfort from the idea that many of these monuments were used as social spaces in the past. The presence of the archaeology is also indicative of the narratives that are not explicit in the landscape. Many people find the thought of these hidden dimensions <coughs> vitalizing in that it adds a level of enchantment to their lives, stimulates the imagination, and prompts them to learn more about their surroundings. By the same token, it also functions as a source for renewal for some people in the way it makes their environment always appear new, dynamic and exciting. A few participants remarked that the curiosity this sense of mystery evokes even gives them an additional sense of purpose. For example, one couple explained how learning about the archaeology in their local area has broadened their horizons, inspiring them to question and learn more about the wider world and realise there is more to life. In the same way, this feeling of wonder gives many participants a creative focus, inspiring them to connect with and interpret their historic environment through creative activities. Another related sub theme which participants regularly refer to is the feeling of awe, amazement and even gratitude that they have for the achievements and capability of the prehistoric inhabitants which they recognise in, in the archaeological remains. This could be interpreted as a sense of pride in human achievement, but also as a feeling of humility. It is possible that both these experiences contribute to the feeling of being part of something greater and essentially something great. Participants reported similar feelings of awe in connection to the theme of continuity with regard to the age and the survival of the monuments. Significant of the continuity of occupation in these landscapes the archaeology acts as a reminder that life goes on, offering a sense of security and hope as a result. This impression is reinforced for some people by the continuity of use of particular monuments. A good example of this is the way in which some people feel that Henge monuments were and continue to be used as gathering places. This aspect of continuity is also often experienced as comforting and fulfilling. 
And yes, the general appreciation of, of continuity brings for many a more keen awareness of time and mortality, providing a greater sense of perspective on one's place in life, time and the human story. Some participants find that it also helps them to put their problems into perspective and remember what is truly important. Paradoxically, the preservation and survival of monuments also gives the impression that while life goes on, it also stays the same in some ways. Like this, people also find comfort and reassurance in the familiarity and permanence of the monuments, which provide a sense of stability in the face of change. It is perhaps on account of this reassuring presence of the sites and monuments that people view them as spaces for contemplation. Numerous participants described how they find solace at certain sites, which enables them to think, reflect and work through emotional issues. This may also be due to the sense of peace that many people find in these places. For others, it is, is possibly the sense of feeling protected in a kind of microcosm away from the wider world. This experience was noted with particular reference to the encompassing nature of Henge monuments. However, this feeling of refuge is also experienced in relation to certain site narratives with which people feel comfortable and which resonate for them. And yet in another way, the strong pres presence of the past that some people intuit at specific sites makes these places seem like another world where they can find space and respite away from the stresses of modern life. But these sites are not only viewed as places in which to ponder or escape problems, some participants also see them as spaces where they can go to daydream and to come up with creative ideas. Thus, in a way, these places might be seen as potential spaces where new insights are gained and change can occur. These, these themes also came up in the group work, and, um, but in an even more pronounced way, along with the connected themes of pilgrimage and transformation. Um, and this is perhaps due to the focused and involved nature of the exercise, which suggests that at least when carried out in the setting of the Avery landscape, this type of reflective activity does have the potential to be developed as a form of therapeutic practice. Of course, not all the research participants felt a deep connection with the historic environment. In fact, one lady expressed complete disinterest, and there was a small minority of participants who were interested in the archaeology, but didn't seem to value it in any deeper way. There were also a couple of participants who professed disinterest, yet on further discussion, it was clear that their outlook on life had been impacted quite profoundly by the presence of the archaeology. On the whole, however, the majority of participants seem to find that the prehistoric landscapes investigated do have a positive impact on their lives. Although these results have yet to be critically assessed, the picture developing from the feedback presented <coughs> suggests that prehistoric archaeology <coughs> in the context of Stonehenge Avery and the Vale of Pusey does have therapeutic value for people and in very particular ways. Thank you.